And I'll admit all. And we have a dozen and a half or so people. Uh, I think 60 people are SVP tonight. And so um, we should make an effort to get to more people than we have of late, where we tend to spend a fair amount of time on several issues. And I think people get tired of waiting. And so if we can respond to that particular aspect, I think that would be useful. Uh, is there someone who'd like to volunteer to go first? Um, we did have the one person who um, posted a long comment, Greg G. Is Greg uh, with us now? No? Okay. If uh, anybody sees Greg arrive, um, speak up because he made the effort to give us some details of his uh, problem. And let's reward that by uh, giving him some input from our elected wisdom. Who would like to go first? Is there someone in our group? Are we all here lurking to learn? Hey, Tony, you got a problem or an issue or? Hi, Robin, thanks for doing this. This is great of you. Uh, yes, uh, okay, so in Elementor, I make a mistake and I know somewhere there's a, button that I can go back to the pre you know and I made the mistake was I deleted a, a paragraph but I don't know how to get previous to the delete how do I do that in Elementor so you want to know where what the un, where the undo command is or to yeah. what it's or exactly how it works is that something well, you know off the top of your head no I'm not an Elementor user so I I don't know that Okay, let's just find out if the um, commenter undo command. Okay, elementary refers to it as revision history. Uh -huh. And um, here's the page that I'm just looking at right now. So yeah, there's it's on the uh, left far left column down at the bottom, there's a history in the black field. And then it shows, but I, none of those uh, headings, those little uh, sections are, are executable or active or live. Can you show I, us your, the screen? You, I could, if you want to see it. Yeah. Okay. Because sometimes it's just, you know, you're looking at something and you're not seeing what's there because you think you already know what's there. And um, okay, so that's the wrong. Oh, let's hang on. Okay, so, okay, here. Uh, okay, here. Yeah, this looks okay. familiar. <laughs> yeah. So here's that left column down here at the bottom. It's uh, it says history. So I click history yeah. now because I, I I took the page and rebooted the whole site. It doesn't even show that my uh, you know the last change was the one that the uh, that I want to undelete. So I, it's really like two two steps back I gotta go first I can't even get the history back and then I now I can't even if I don't have the are, history there. are you able to, to click on that tab that says revisions yeah I'm just gonna say up at the top up at the top the tab you clicked is actions prior oh yeah oh my god there it is right so here's the one 33 minutes ago uh now what do I do if I, I want to that's the one that deleted the paragraph for me, you know, and I, and I said, Oh my God, I deleted the paragraph. <laughs> and I, you know, I did it wrong because I deleted the paragraph inside of uh, uh, the Elementor uh, home system, you know, the home page and its links. I did not do the editing on the widget on the left sidebar. I was an accidentally thought I was in uh, Gutenberg and I did it inside over here in the center. I should have did it as elementary requires. So that's 
I thought I was in Gutenberg. Right. The, the uh, help page just says, uh, you know, select the version in question. Okay, I'm selecting it. Does it do anything? There's a little and then, and then there's an apply button that should light up. Right above it, you see the yeah, word, the yeah. button says apply. You need to wait for that uh, spinner to stop spinning. Oh. So you're waiting for it to do something. Oh, boy. <laughs> we may have a long wait. <laughs> I'm, I'm... Why is that? Well, because, you know, when I load up the system, Elementor takes two plus minutes to load up. And oh. I, I just very unhappy <laughs> with it taking so long. Okay, so and... is it stop spinning? Looks like it. The apply button worked. Is, is oh now mm -hmm. yeah that okay now hit the apply. Now wait a second, wait a second. You understand <laughs> that what you're doing is swapping out one chunk for the one you selected, right? Now my reading of the page is that you can also go back. You know, in other words, undo what you've just done applying this current revision. Um, but are you comfortable that you know sort of how this mechanism works in terms of what you're replacing? No, but you know, just <laughs> that I learned that you have to long wait, and right. that there's a an apply that comes up after a long wait. To me, that's a you know a success and a miracle to know that. And, and what about the update button down at the bottom of that column? Um, I, I'm not. Don't click it. The pink one. The update. Right across. Oh, the purple thing. Yeah, here. What about it? I'm scared of hitting that too. I'm well, I think you can click the up way. arrow. Beside yeah, it. Could... No, no, look to the right. Click the arrow and that should give you your choices. So click that button. Oh, yeah. How about that? Right. One of the things that I found, even though I've got an, an, an amazing amount of experience with an amazing number of computers, the modern computer has many features which you can only find by, in a sense, just pounding on things to see what happens. <laughs> I'll give you an example. I, I periodically use, I, on my iPhone, I use the Safari browser. And I cursed for a couple of years about how difficult it is on a long newspaper article to go from the beginning to the end or vice versa, because you can't seem to grasp the scroll button and therefore control it in one big sweep up or down. Well, it turns out if you just pound in the immediate vicinity of that scroll button, all of a sudden, some widget appears and locks your cursor to this scroll button. And then you can go up and down to your heart's content, accurately jumping to exactly where you want to go. I, I never so. would have found that, yeah. but for this idea of go and look at the interface, just to sort of click this, click that, and observe what happens, if anything. That's, okay. So that's why so I'm saying here's that yellow, update. this center column here, this is what I accidentally... I, I did a delete and it's all gone. Now I'm 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 assuming if I go back one day, that center column will ap appear. Because that was yesterday and it was there just fine. I guess the only way is to try it. Yeah, I'm 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 willing to. Now you could you could, for example, <laughs> make a copy of the page you're working on. Oh, that's the page that's got the missing column though. Why yeah, but I'm saying though that 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 means you can at least return to this point. Oh, if, if the next step doesn't do what you want to do, you have the option of just throw out that page and get the one you just made. Now there will be an issue with the naming of the page because you can't have two pages with the same name. Right. But you can rename the saved page to the deleted page's name, and you should be good to go. Well, you know, if I do that. Then I have like a double. Uh, yes, and, it, and that's just the suspenders and belt sort of notion. <laughs> yeah. That even though the belt should work, you know, suspenders aren't a bad idea, or <laughs> vice versa. Oh God, where the hell does this page go? I mean, it's over there on the server. Um, no, you some... just go to your pages section of your site, right? Like you'd normally create a new page, but instead of creating a page, you're just copying the oh, one. In I can't do that. I'm, my skill level is not up to that. Because that means I got to get out of Elementor. Oh, okay, and... okay, okay. Yeah, all right. Anyway, <laughs> so do you want to try this now or wait to do it later? Yeah, let's try it now. Okay. I mean, otherwise, you know, 
what were the what were the update options by the way just pull those for a second click no click the up arrow so we can just check oh, them okay in. yeah uh, well okay that one yeah it says okay, so you can save draft condition by temp template save with a template save page template okay none of those are relevant right not to me other than save draft <laughs> right, save draft. That well, you know, that might yeah, be what that's saying, update but... the same as usual. Yeah. Okay, so you can close that. Okay. No, click just click it the, there. You got it. Okay. The down arrow would have done it. Okay. I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna go yesterday. I don't know. This is one second ago. Nah. Although, you know, that might, yeah. That's the last. Let's try the top one first. I thought that's the one you, you did try. No, I haven't tried it yet. Oh, okay. Oh, I I mean, uh, I mean I'm mean, i going to, oh, it's, well, no, I haven't tried it. I mean, we, I did try, I don't know if the apply took, the apply didn't seem, okay, now it stopped spinning. Yeah, as soon and as the light, as soon as the apply light uh, button lights up, as it is now, right, it's good to go. Okay, I hit apply. Oh my God. See, this is why I'm crabby about Elementor. There's no, it's not executing. Oh, there it might go. I don't know why my ISP or my hookup is so slow. Yeah, this, it's coming in, but it's still a blank. So, blank. Okay, well, I think, I mean, all you can do is take advantage of the number of revisions there and just back step as you go and, you know, until you get the one that has the content. I mean, yeah. The, the very first thing, at least after you did whatever initial step in the session in which you lost the content, then a revision could well have been made. And that's the one you're looking for. It's these revisions aren't only created at the end of a session, they're created as you go. Okay, I've taken enough of everybody's time. I have enough to work with, like I said, uh, you know, just the fact that I had I didn't know I had to wait so long on that and and how to use this left column. I'd be able to go back, as you say, to the baby step backwards to these revisions and find and as I say, do read that to help page again, even though you may think you know all that's in it. Where's you know, the help keep reading it because you'll yeah. pick up more as you go along. I'm sorry, Robin. Where's the help page? Is there? Is I, there I, I put the link into uh, the chat window. Oh, okay. It's the elementary page. Okay. Thank I'm you. I'm sure guys. you've been there, but I appreciate uh, this. I, I I don't want to uh, abuse anybody here with time. Thank you so much. I've no figured this out now. Okay. <laughs> Thank All right, uh, two people have entered the waiting room. Let me admit them. Can I make you a co-host, uh, Drew? Yeah, go ahead. Uh, so we don't leave people up there too long. <laughs> I just let them in. Um, but you're now co-host. Okay. Um, I guess I pretty much answered that, didn't I? Or at least with Drew's help. So if um, other people feel free to speak up when we get the next problem going, because we'd like to hear from your input as well and ideas as well as the person with the problem in question. So who would like to be next? Not seeing a hand thing, but I'll go next if you like. If, if Doug, yeah, um, yeah, I, 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 I think, think I, I can go next. Can you hear me? Uh, is this Suds? Can you... Oh, yes, no. indeed. Okay. Okay. Why don't we do Suds and then Doug will come back to you? How's that? Okay. Uh, so Suds, if you could turn your there you are. Can, could you turn your video? You guys on, can please? hear me okay, right? Yeah, but we'd like to see you just at the beginning, at least. Yeah, I can. Yeah, 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 yeah. No. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I'm doing it. One second. Oh, man. It should work. Sorry, bear with me. Sorry, guys. I'm hitting the camera. It does not go on. Okay, well, then fire away. Is that a reason my camera shouldn't? Uh, everyone else's seems to be. 
Oh, uh, there you through, go. as you can see. I've sometimes had a problem activating my camera if yeah. there's a dialog box open on the screen. Oh, there you are. Okay, we see you now. I I just I was just doing a pro on. I was doing a program. You can see me now. Sorry, I was doing a pro on accessibility today, and apparently being your camera on consumes more energy than being a job. So anyway, hello everyone. Um, your connection, your connection is to a your connect. Hello, hello, hello. Eight. I, I let's let's try. Let's try your video off because your internet connection here. is very, very slow and we're not going to be able to understand you. Okay, try speaking now because that should should be better. Can you guys hear me? Yes, I think can your you, connection is you okay now. Yeah, are, are you able to hear us? Hello? I'm just strange. I can hear I can hear you okay. Okay, well, leave your video off because that's consuming your bandwidth and we weren't breaking up your audio, so it wasn't intelligible. So we'll leave the video off and just proceed, please. Thank you. If you can hear me, I'll start speaking, my uh, outlining my issue. I'm trying to upgrade my site to the PHP version 8. I'm currently on 7.4, uh, but when I try to do the upgrade from my host and the site crashes. So I went ahead and um, deactivated some of the inactive plugins, but it's still causing some issues. So I'm nervous about what to do next. Did you guys hear oh, that? Yeah, could you just repeat the very first part? You, uh, you're you doing the PHP upgrade? I'm doing a PHP upgrade from 7.4 to 8, right. but when I do the upgrade on my host, the site crashes. Okay, now did you check anything the site crashes the upgrade? I mean, did you check any plugins? To uh, see no, I was just, work? I was just. Well, I did the I did the plugin compatibility checker. I deactivated all the inactive plugins, and right. then I also from the remaining plugins, right. I I did a compatibility checker. And I can share a spreadsheet with you guys, which has the results, if that's okay. Sure. I'll because just the, the spreadsheet in essence, and then it. it's find an alternative for a plugin that isn't able to run under PHP 8 um, or yeah. get an update uh, okay. from the developer. Yeah, I'm trying to figure out which plugin is the one causing the issue that I can um, then sure. manage or you guys can guide me on um, what you can do next and then eventually get the upgrade done because I'm paying for support for the 7.4, which is kind of useless. Right, well, why don't you share your screen with the spreadsheet rather than yep. have each of us download it and, and so on. Yeah, 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 100%, let me do that. Or actually, we don't have to download it because it's on Google Drive, right? Yep, yep. Can you guys see my screen? Coming up, just a second. Yeah, that's true. Not no point. Okay, there it is. Into this. Yeah, there's yeah. an advantage though to sharing your screen in terms of uh, our discussion here. So, which yeah. were the ones which were problematic? In terms I don't know. Of that's the checker. I mean, that's what, what I'm what calling is... about. Right, but I mean, for example, uh, line five, all in one. Uh, no data from the from the checker, presumably, but that's an easy one to check, right? I mean, that's a very so the big ones one, that... and it would be hard to believe that it wouldn't be compatible with eight. Um, so yeah. any of the ones with, sorry, I said the ones. Uh, actually, you know what? Even better than the spreadsheet, I'll share my actual dashboard with you guys. It's easy, way easier. Yeah, but does it identify the ones that are problematic? Yep. Um, I'll actually, it'll be the easier one. Yeah. Sure. Thank you. I appreciate your patience, folks. Okay. You see this now? Yep. This is the okay. colored one, a, a table, right? Yeah. This is these are this is the plugin compatibility checker that threw up. I'm trying to figure out which one's causing the problem, and there's five of them. I suspect these are the ones causing the problem. Right. 
I don't know. Well, I mean, sorry, go to the top of the, the table just because so we can see the call the um what do you call it? The labels. So updatable with the latest version of WordPress. So any of that don't have a yes in the second to last column. Uh-huh. Or you can simply look in the supported PHP versions and and each one, any one that doesn't have an 8.0 in it is a problem, right? Like all-in-one migration, uh, 7.81, um, mm. supported PHP version is 5.6. That's a bit hard to believe because the current plugin version, well, 5.6 is ancient. Yeah, right? yeah. However, yeah. however, be that as it may, so anything that's in supported PHP version that's not eight, yeah, and that does not have a yes in the second to last column, then you need to go to the plugin site and uh, check its um, if it runs with version eight. Got it. Got it. Okay. And I, then... I mean, if there's a half a dozen, it's not going to take more than an hour to get through them. Um, yeah. And the big ones, Slider Revolution, WordPress Importer, um, All in One Migration. I I would think, and guys, you know, correct me if you think I'm wrong, but I think those will be pretty clearly uh, compatible because they're in such widespread use yeah. that yeah. it'd be hard. I mean, WordPress Importer. I think that's the WordPress Importer that comes with as part of Core, right? Yeah. Well, yeah. there's no way that would not be compatible because, well, because you know they don't release Core with incompatible components. Yeah. 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 So why this? So okay. So I go to each of these individual plugin sites and then figure out whether it's a versioning issue or it should be a versioning issue. Is it? Well, it should be you getting your plugin updated to the latest while you confirm that it's 8.0 compatible. Now, uh, I'm not sure what you do about WordPress importer since. Actually, yes, there there is a that is a plugin, right? I keep thinking that one of those two, importer or exporter comes with core the other one is part of core but requires the user to to um install it and activate it um it. i'm not sure if that's importer or exporter but in any event um googling wordpress importer in that regard will take you to the right place um okay so i'll i'll do a bit of research on these five uh, well the other thing is to turn off then... turn off deactivate all of these red ones and see if the site comes up. It should, right? So I deactivate and then upgrade uh, on the well, whole just, and a, quick, a quick way to check is simply to deactivate the potentially problematic plugins, the red ones. Got it. Restart your site. It should come up normally because all the rest are green. But... Um, if that's the case, if it doesn't come up normally, when the red ones are deactivated, then you'll have to go through that tedious exercise of deactivating more plugins and restarting to finally find out whichever one is the difference between starting and not starting. That's a kind of a parallel problem with the red line, red row uh, plugins, which you need to go check an update so in any of just, it. Right? So just to just understand, at least the five at the low hanging fruit, I'll go and check their compatibility first and then deactivate them one by one and then update the version on the host and then see if the site is broken. Well, I would start the other way. I would start. If I understand that correctly. By, by uh, deactivating all the red plugins and see if the site starts because if it does oh, yeah. start then you know that the problem is what you're just about to fix by checking and then updating each of the red ones right oh good stuff okay i don't have to i don't have to upgrade the php in order to see the the problem i can just straight away deactivate it. these and if the site crashes then we you know well i mean um, you're back. You're still on seven point four, right? So what you want to do yeah. is yeah. is go to eight in order to test the deactivated plugins and so on, and then 
And if it doesn't restart, then you got to go back to 7.4 and then stick around or do whatever. And then, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. you have to run it on 7.4, but test it on 8.0. Got now, it. is yep, your is yep. your host just, saying that exactly what that is the, does does your host say that eight o is the um, latest version of PHP that it, it supports? No, it's uh, up, supports up to eight point three. Eight point three. So why are you picking eight point o? Um, that, oh, that's true. Actually, good point. Good call out. Good call. Oh uh, yeah, I'm gonna jump in okay. here quick. Sure. If you don't mind. Yes, please, Jason. Yeah. So like what what's the point like what's your end goal of using 8.0 um i'm paying support right now monthly for the 7.4 right now it just seems pointless to me well the your issue with updating the php is because of wordpress core being so your your okay. your support is only provided for php 8.0 no, no, it's the opposite. The support I'm paying support for seven for right now. Then so why don't you why don't you stay at seven point four? Because if anything, the plugins should be. I mean, the PHP should be like the last stuff to update because all the plugins are gonna take time to update their um, plugins to be compatible with eight point zero. If you're not having any issues, whether your goal is to getting, I don't know, traffic or building a site for customers, if 7.4 isn't affecting you in meeting your end goal, I don't think you should rush into uh, upgrading to 8.0. But if you really, really wanted to upgrade, um, okay. yeah, like Robin said, uh, you want to upgrade to 8.0 first. And then deactivate all the plugins, and then you'll be activating one by one to see at which plugin the site crashes, and then you will just read those plugins out. But to me, like if if seven point four isn't affecting you by any means, running your website, I think you're just wasting time. Yeah, got it. So That's I should just, just eat eat the cost, eat the monthly cost port. Well, what is, I mean, it does sound a bit unusual to be getting support for PHP when, let's, I guess put it this way, I've never heard of anybody paying for PHP support per se. Yeah, you get support from a host, but that's with respect to whatever hosting issues there are, PHP being probably one of the few, the rarest to be, to be an issue. Um, how, how, yeah, I have a question. How will your hosting costs change if you go to PHP 8? Yeah, like, do they waive the support fees? Or, I don't get it. Because they're charging me, yes. They're charging me 20 bucks a month for supporting 7.4. So my last question with the group was going to be, should I just get a new host? Because this this is probably just a, 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 a redundant call they have, they will let me. What, what What's the name of the host? One and one. Well, that's the English company, isn't it? It's one and one Ionos. I yeah, Ionos. I O N O S. Right. I um well, I, I just my in my experience, I've never heard of anybody paying for PHP support as such. Um if anything, it's something that's part of what the host provides uh to support the application and therefore problems that it will resolve. Um so, well, and then the other, you know, the, the other key point, uh, Jason, is that WordPress is recommending upgrading to PH4, PH4, uh, 8.0 and PHP for features it is bringing in that require it. Now, I don't have at my fingertips those things and whether or not 0 0.0, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, or 0.3 is, is involved, but generally the minor releases are less consequential than the major ones. Um, and 7.4 has been out for a long time. So will their hosting cost go down yeah. if you go to a uh, version 8? That's what, it's an extra extra line item by the hosting company for just 7.4 support specifically, which is weird. So yeah, I, I get, get off of that for sure. As well. Functionally, it's not a problem, but 
calculate the cost. Yeah, yeah. I'll just find a new host then, I guess, right? Well, it does seem sort of strange, number one. Number two. Sorry, I think the audio. Um, you know, Jason's point is all is well taken that the very first thing to do is to update all your plugins. Now, um, they have to be updated though, Jason. You want the plugins to know that 8.0 is running or some version of 8 is running. Does a plugin developer check? I don't think so. I guess they just give you the latest version. And if that happens to be compatible yeah. with 8.0, then you're lucky. And if it isn't compatible, well, then you at least you've got the latest version. Um, yeah, yeah. That's the goal. Um, so okay, one thing I, I want to add here. Sorry. Sorry yes. Yeah. So one thing I want to add here. So um, you got to think this to yourself, right? Like whenever someday in the future, if we ever upgraded to 9.0 or something like that, and you're going to have this problem again, right? And at that point, you yeah. might think yeah. back and, oh, I should have just changed my hosting back then. You know what I mean? Good point. Good point. So I guess I'll evaluate the hosting overall. Uh, rather than than about it, it's probably just a come by combination. I I would mention uh, that and put the link. I'll put the link in here. Here's what WordPress's current recommendation is. Um, there is also one more thing to be considered here, and that is that this could be an incompatibility with the theme, not just with the plugins. So make sure that you have the latest version of your theme installed. Oh, good point, point. Drew. Good now, just to go back to that, to, to, to the question of going to eight, what WordPress officially says is, um, if you're using WordPress 6.2, you should be at least on PHP 8.1. If you keep your WordPress uh, core, plugins and themed up to date, everything should work fine. If you're not yet using WordPress 6.2, we strongly recommend that you use this version of WordPress for maximum PHP compatibility. And so mainly, so and so they recommend 8.1 or 8.2 uh, as the current version. Uh, so that's the one that you should aim for. Um, whatever grief you go through now, um, is just learning because at some point, you know, as Jason says, PHP 9 will come about and the process is going to be exactly the same. Yep. 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 Uh, uh, so I'll first, call, I'll do the, before I do the testing, I call the hosting company if it's just a revenue line item for them or is it a genuine need for support? And if not, then I'll probably do the my one check. But I know that there's a layer of diligence outside. But I appreciate that. I think I've taken a lot of time. And check the theme also to really appreciate the support here. Great. Okay, then. Who's next? Uh, sorry. For Rebecca, find out. Okay. Yes. Um, yeah, I think I think I think I was next. Yes, um, Doug. Right. Thanks for reminding me. Maybe we can <laughs> also get Suds to stop sharing the screen. Yes. Yeah. Um, you may recall the last thing we, I was having a problem with something was blocking my website and it just it would spin around, etc. And nothing was happening and a number of suggestions, which I went through. Um, I went through all the plugins, nothing was every, everything with that was just sort of still kept spinning around. I tried various uh, themes, it still kept spinning around. Um, uh, that sort of left WordPress itself. So I um, Put, put in updraft and backed everything up and reinstalled WordPress. Um, and that, that sort of <laughs> really started creating problems. Um, I um, it wasn't, wasn't connecting with connecting with, with my database, um, went through the host various times the things there were files missing, et cetera, et cetera. And they really screwed things up. Um, and so I, I and then recently I said, well, I, I, was, I was getting all kinds of messages about who couldn't connect to the database. Eventually, I, I, I've been, been through the PHP info file and everything seems to match and so on and so forth. Um, I eventually as I well, okay, I'll, I'll delete the delete the database and see if that makes any difference. Now I can't get a, can't, can't get a database. 
So I'm basically back to square one. <laughs> um, I still I have home, I've got my backup uh, somewhere. Um, well, I, I know where it is, but I can't get WordPress up and running. Uh, something's blocking that somehow or other, um, or I, I or I don't understand how how to connect it to a database, which I'm not sure. Um, I, I tried to try to uh, create a database um, in, in cPanel. Uh, and managed managed to create the name, but it has absolutely nothing in it. I tried to put in users, and didn't work. Um, so whether I'm naming things wrong, I'm not too sure. But uh, but basically, I've, I've I've got a new install of WordPress, and I can't connect to anything. Any suggestions? <laughs> but you cannot get WordPress to connect to the database. That's right. Okay, so you probably got a problem in your um, WP config file. Probably the wrong database name or the wrong well, that, password. I, I went through all that, and I probably, huh. if, if I can, I might be able to share my screen here, and you can see it. Can I, can I share my screen? Let me just share my screen. Yeah, it's the green button. There we are. The bottom of the window in the middle. Okay. And then I will do this. Uh, there, there's my. Okay, are you seeing that or not? No, not yet. Not yet. Uh, why are you not seeing it? Okay. Share screen. Oh, there we are. There we are. Okay. Ah, here we are. Is that it? No, this is it. This is. Is that it? What I find is that. Uh... When you've got a bunch of windows open, make sure the one you want to share is foremost when you then switch over to the Google or to the Zoom display to then pick which window it is that you want or which tab rather you want to display. That's not it, is it? No, that's not <laughs> that's my word. My eyesight isn't very good either, so. <laughs> Oh, where are we here? Here we are. There's that. Okay, now then. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Stop share. Stop the share. Okay. Does your hosting provide live chat support? I uh, find these uh, what, kind of issues. Hang, hang on just a second, Jason. Jason, Jason, let him, let him get his uh, screen displayed because he won't be able to do both things listen to you and do that. that that's it. There it is. That's it there. Okay, I will share that one. There we go. There we go. There's my WP config. And there's my database. Ah. <laughs> okay, wait a second now, Doug. Jason, go ahead. Um, you really shouldn't be um, dis uh, displaying this. This is a, a bit of a problem, displaying this publicly, um, because this is being recorded and will go on YouTube. And basically, the whole world can now see your uh, WordPress uh, uh, database password. So you really don't want to share your your. Well, uh, he, he, he's done it, so he has to change yeah. the password, yeah. right? Okay, yeah. right, yeah. So uh, Doug, that that's something important that that uh, we I guess we should have mentioned that before mm -hmm. we asked yeah, yeah, okay, for the WP right. um, file. Now, what what I, the kind of thing I'm not sure it, it, the database name. Um, should there be a, a a slash in front of it or something like that, or should there or does that look right? I just I just put it in the date. I just sort of tried this again today and still didn't work. So I used an admin, which is that's a password. Um, is I mean, does does that look right? I don't see an obvious problem. Let me just check something. Now, it, you know, when I when I tried to log in uh, to the, that's a database I had created that database and I tried to log in and I put in wp dash admin like I normally do mm -hmm. and you used that password and but it, but it was giving me a, a message that it just couldn't connect but it wasn't connecting to the database um, so I'm not too sure where I am. <laughs> I have a question, Robin. Yeah. Um, 
I, I don't do this in uh, in WordPress, but generally speaking, local host wouldn't actually do anything for my uh, my real users. They would try to connect something on their own computer. You're right. Um, under database host name, Doug, yeah. signal last item. And got database host is local host. Right. Um, I'm just looking now to see a name selection. <clears throat> uh, Drew, do you recall from your own config files what sort of names are used under DB host? Um, I need to look it up, but um, I have a couple more questions about this process. First of all, sure. if you get this working, uh, what you're going to end up with is a completely blank WordPress site. Well, the, that's why I have the backup, won't I? Or... Okay. I did a backup under Updraft. Okay. I have that file. I have that file is on my computer and, and also on the host. Uh, so I'm okay. I'm hoping I'm hoping I can get to the stage that it'll that I can updraft that I can recreate okay. it. Okay. Um so the the um WordPress install process basically does all this stuff for you. Uh you don't generally have to update your your or, or modify your your WP config file manually. Um, the, the install process creates the database uh, and creates the WP config file to match. Um, so I would actually just go through the install process right from your uh, web hosts um, uh, cPanel window or whatever control panel they're using, right. whether it's cPanel or something else. Yeah. Uh, and let it do all this for you, rather than trying to troubleshoot this. Should I? Should I? Well, okay. That, that's a question I had when I, I asked my host, and I never, never got an answer from them. Um, that basically, um, when I when I reinstall um, WordPerfect, I'm not Word, Word, <laughs> WordPress. Um, should I have deleted the existing database? Um, not necessary, but, uh, when you reinstall another, another instance of WordPress, it will create a new database for you. It so will the create, previous, it so will, the previous database then just becomes, it will just sit there. It'll just uh, sit there. Okay. Uh, right. and it will, uh, and, uh, WordPress will create a new one. It will create a new blank database. Now, Drew, do you make any distinction between using, uh, one of the scripts that cPanel provides? The script, for example, to install WordPress or simply get the WordPress install package, download that, and then run that in the account and, uh, you know, get the standard, what are five steps that WordPress involves. I can't recall off the top of my head exactly how that script delicious thing works. Does it follow the same sequence of steps as it, it, it does? It does pretty much the same thing. I think it's a little, it's easier to use. Yeah. Well, it has to end up in the same place. I'm yeah. just saying, does it use the same labels and so on that the uh, WordPress core version of it actually does? Because if mm -hmm. that's the case, then it's just a convenience to use it, Doug, rather than taking the safer route and um, using something which is guaranteed to work, which is the WordPress app itself. Okay, yeah, I mean the um, um, yeah, okay, okay. I, I, what, okay what, just what, on the one question of the naming of things, yeah, right. I mean, it just happens to be a kind of an arbitrary convention that WordPress established years ago to automatically provide a database name um, with a suffix wp underscore and then a bunch of numbers, sort of randomly chosen numbers. So that way, it can give every database created by WordPress to have a unique database name in that fashion. So as long as your name is unique, then fine. It doesn't need to have a WP suffix. That's that's just the way things have been traditionally um, and isn't necessary to, I mean, it's an arbitrary thing. Uh, there isn't a default database name. Um, WordPress okay. provides the files. And, and then it's the, the host that actually provides the database. 
Yeah, and with the hosting panels, you don't even worry about database names. That's taken care of for you behind the scenes. Right, so that's why the WP underscore <laughs> arbitrary number would be what a script would use in creating the database. Okay. Right? Okay. And then just compare the results for your own curiosity to the WP config file you got now and see what differences there are, if any. Yeah. Um, the question about the local host, I, 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 I asked, asked my host about that one and didn't, didn't get an answer there either. Um, but yeah, I, I was surprised, surprised that it's, that it had local host there because I always associated that with XAMPP. But anyway, um, so that would be, okay, well, I, I, I can try that. <laughs> Hopefully we'll get. Hopefully when when I get to the point that I that I that I can actually resurrect this, because um, I, I had a lot of work into that. Uh, what I've done. But your uh, your web host doesn't sound very responsive for their technical support. Um, well, well, they were they were responsive in terms of, of reasonable speed, but the the answers tended to be rather like I actually like like they actually told me one time that my config file. I looked at my config file and it had somebody else's somebody else's uh, information in it <laughs> which was sort of okay <laughs> um you know you could you could tell from the names on there that it had nothing to do with what anything i i put in there um they had managed to put some then there, there was something else they did too oh anyway yeah okay um we'll try all that and hopefully by next month i'll be up and running <laughs> all right Okay. Okay. Uh, yes, uh, you can take your um, stop screen sharing. Okay. I will stop screen sharing. And, uh, um, stop sharing. Okay. There we go. That should do it. Okay. All right. Uh, someone wants to join. Right. Hmm. I'm not seeing anything. Oh, well, someone said in the chat, Natalie. I think she's already in. Oh. <laughs> Hello, can, can you guys hear me? Yep. Yeah. So I don't see you though. Um, uh, hold on here. I started my video. Oh, I'd like to join meeting. I'd like to give you my problem. Is that Jason? What? What? Because it wasn't joining the meeting. You can't chat without being in part of the meeting already. Right. Um. Hold on here. Um, okay, so let's just get the show started. In the meantime, I'm still trying to work on the video. Um, but I do want some assistance um, in terms of um, my WordPress website. Um, in terms of the options that's available on the dashboard on the left-hand side, I don't have the option to add a, a menu tab to my website because I don't have the menu sub option under appearances on the left hand side panel. So I wanted to know how do I, how do I get that? How do I get the menu tab where I'm able to add a menu to my homepage on my website? Hmm, you're not seeing a menu under appearance? So let's see the admin page. Okay, let me see if I'm able to share screen. Okay, just a moment here. Okay, are you able to see it? Yes. Okay, so... Normally, under the appearance tab, you would see other options like menu and like other options here where I'm able to add a menu tab to my to my website. And I just don't have this option here. So I wanted to know how am I able to get that um, the menu, like menu here where I'm able to mm. add tabs to my homepage. Right, you lost me in the last oh. little bit. Something about the menu and adding tabs to your homepage. Yeah. Okay. So let me go to my let me go to my um website here. Well, actually, well, 
So you see here how you have how there's home, about, services. Right. I want to be able to add other menu tabs up here. So I want to add blogs. I want to add, like I want to add other tabs. Now, when you, when you say tab, tab, do you mean you'd like a drop down menu or you'd like just a link that when you click services, it goes to the services page or click services and a menu appears below services? Which of the two are you referring to? Uh, so none of the above. So I want to add blog right here. So I want to yes, add yes, a, yes. But a, a is, blog page. Are you talking about blog, a link to the blog being what you're adding or a menu titled blog? So. Okay, let's okay, skip all so that. And we'll just, we'll assume it's a single item because you can always go from a single item to a menu easily. Mm -hmm. So in terms of my posts, so I created a few posts here and the, the, the posts are here. Um, and I, I don't have a page created for it. Or it meaning what? Pardon? When you say it, what are you referring to? You don't have a page created so I, I don't have a, I don't have a blog page. So I want to be able to add um so there's there's several little little things that i wanted assistance with so back to the first one in terms of the, under the appearance tab here normally i see other like i've seen other content um on youtube for example where people are able to add um menus to their their website can you try clicking okay. customize and then okay and then normally, normally I see them go into appearance and then when they go into appearance, this little, this, the same box would appear, but then I see they have themes, editor, um, customize, they would have menu. And I see them clicking on menu where they're able to add. Um, um, try, try tools. Just down a couple of items. Mm -hmm. Available tools, import, export, site, have none of them. No. No, I think Greg, you must be on a previous version because he just put a screenshot of the tools having a sub menu menus and it's got customized in there as well. So that's that's back a while, I think. Uh, so there's so usually a sure few if factors it, if, affecting if the this. Theme, I'm not sure if it's a theme that I have that's maybe impacting it, or do I need to? So add let's go back to theme? Jason uh, and, and okay. you want to go to the customizer, Jason, right? Yes. Sometimes it still shows under customize. Right. And so appearance, customize. Appearance, cu customize. Appearance and customize. Yeah. What version of WordPress are you running? Okay, it's not. Um. So use site editor at the top. It might be your theme. That's okay, never mind. Navigation. The navigation. Yeah, like I want, um, you know, like I want to be able to add my blog page, but I, I don't know how to add the, I don't know how to add it. Did you click the pencil up above? Pardon? Did you click the pencil up above, pencil icon? Mm-hmm. Uh, I think yeah. if you click that plus sign. Yeah, those are the menus. Right, but that's what we're talking about, right? And type in blog. Now, you, well, you don't have. I mean, I, well, name, yeah, I mean, I don't. I. Mm. You don't. You don't have to have the page open or created as then, but it's better to create a page called blog and use that to create the menu item. That's the easiest way. So let's just exit out of this. Yeah, just leave that and then go create the page and then go back and assign that page to that menu item. Now, is this going to appear on my home page? Now that I've added it here, is it going to, if I, because I do have a blog page that that, that I did create, or is it going to now appear mm. on this? Or I thought you said you I didn't have a this? blog page. Um, I'm going to go back. Can I interject go... for a second, please? Absolutely. Yeah, your blog page is uh, marked private. Yes, it's marked private only because I, I didn't want it to be visible because I'm still trying to figure out how 
Okay, to but if you mark it public just for a second, it, it will probably, it will show up on the menu. As an available choice. Yes. Okay, so, yeah. Okay, so let's go Sorry back Sorry for interrupting. <laughs> no, no, that's be, please do that when you think it's appropriate. If, if uh, I can handle uh, it, if it becomes an interruption. Anyway, where are you going now? Oh, sorry, keep going, keep going. I, I forgot what you were doing. I just wanted to see if that, oh, okay, okay, perfect. Okay, now the next thing was- um... Wait a second, we haven't finished though, because you have to assign a page to that menu item. Anyway, you can figure that out then, sure. I mean, yes. if there's something else. So, okay. so um, I think so... it's the theme that's affecting that. So if you want to verify, theme? yeah, if you want to verify, you can change to like a default theme quickly and see if that menu comes back up, then you know it's the themes issue. Yeah, let's activate the hello or. Activate the hello? Uh, that's one possibility. I'm just narrowing. I'd rather do 20 there you go. Work. Yeah, see the menu came up. Oh. So it's your theme. Yeah, that's, see, uh, this... Good call, Jason. Yeah, so your theme wants to use that block editor instead of the appearance menu. But then is it going to change? Oh, but see, it changed. Did it change? Yeah, you will have website? to revert back to your original theme. But now you know where to edit your menus, right? And, and you know why it isn't appearing where yeah. people say it should be, right? Because that could be bothersome when it's supposed to be somewhere and it doesn't appear there. But Jason's pointed out that changing the theme causes it to appear where we normally expect it, where we expect it, and then mm -hmm. going back to your theme. Now you can still, no, I... you're not losing anything. It just happens to be going to a somewhat different location on the, you know, on the interface, but the result will be the same. Now, if I was to go back to this theme, I mean, I'm able to switch back and forth between themes without losing any content or anything. Yeah, I asked you what, what version of WordPress you want. Uh, is it, is it, where would I find that information? Uh, well, on the, on the dashboard, the main page usually tells you. Anyway, if, are you in six? I mean, because if that's the case, then navigation has moved and substantially changed and been improved. Uh, where are we? Where are we, guys? Isn't it supposed to appear somewhere? Um, here? And then in terms of my pages now, so hang on, I'm hang on. One thing if... at a time. One thing at a time. Oh, sorry, uh, sorry. We want to. We want to on the updates page. All oh, right, right. Dash Under... Dashboard updates. I'm on my dashboard. I'm on the dashboard. Down here. to items to updates. On the left. Left sidebar. Down. Two items down from dashboard. Updates. Sorry, where did you say to go? Sorry. Left sidebar, two items under dashboard. It says updates. Up, up. Oh, 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 oh this. Okay, okay. 6.4.3. Okay, right. So navigation has moved. Uh, to where you found it and everything you want to do with navigation, you can do from that editor interface, such okay. as adding mm -hmm. menu items, changing items to uh, drop down sub menus to putting a mega menu in, et cetera. Now, what was the, there was other, another question before oh, we yeah, leave you wanted to assign the, the blog page or something. Wasn't yeah. that the next one? Before we leave this right. issue though, we should revert it back to the uh, original theme. Yes, yes, sure. So we're back to the original theme? Okay. Uh, yeah. Going here, go back to appearances, themes, and then see to activate. Yeah. Fresh. Okay, so when I click on this now, okay, now in terms of, in terms of, um, this, how do I add the picture here? Because I've been trying to figure out how to uh, change the, the back photo here and I just don't know why it's not doing that. 
like where do I find to edit the back photo? I like I want to change the back photo here. Can you describe what you're referring to as the back photo? So do you see the photo here, this picture here, this on um, this deep background pictures? The background image, yes. I want yeah, to change the background image. You'd like to change the background image for this particular block. Right? right. Is that it? Right. And I think we're looking at a header block right now, or a header template is what we're looking at, right, guys? Because that means site editor, right? And the site yeah, editor. So this is the block. So this is the blog post. This is actual blog post here. Right, but that's not what we're interested right. in. We're interested in the mm -hmm. header. The best travel mm -hmm. destinations in 2024 is a header, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so actually, let's go to the page. Let's go to the editor here. Edit, edit, right this page. Um, is that right, edit actually? Post. Yeah, is that actually the? Um... Sorry, I just wanted to confirm that when you, we look at this post, that it is a editor that we're looking for. It could be a post template, a header used in the oh, post no. template, or it could be the, the, the same the same template part that's used for the homepage. There is another possibility as well. And Which that is, is, is that uh, what we're actually looking at is the post featured image. It's a common practice to put the featured image in the header for some themes. Okay, but we can find that out from looking at the template part, right? You can find it out by actually on the right at, side on, under categories. At, mm -hmm. So I do there, have a feature, oh, yeah. featured no, image. Not. So that I'm not concerned about. I want to be able to put the an image, a background image in the in the blog post, so that at okay. least when you know readers given see, that it, it, see that mm -hmm. default given blue that, and white. Right. Given that the header does not appear when you edit the post. I think that tells us that we're looking at a template part. Does anybody okay. see this differently? Yeah, I think it's the post template. Okay. And so it is probably in your Let's theme. use the correct term. It's a template part we're looking for. There's so templates. Click templates. Oh, click on templates. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then manage all. I'm not sure where in this version template parts are. Oh, the templates. No, it's template parts, not templates we want. Uh, I'm sorry. What wait a second. There's header, template? footer, marble. Uh, Maybe this. Maybe header and footer. I can try clicking on that and see. Um, can you go to a single post at the very bottom? Yeah. Oh, yeah, that one. The one you were. Just a uh, single post. Hold on. I just yeah, single post. Hold on. Was Single that post. article written under post or page? It, it is It is a post. Yeah, then I think it's a single post. Where did it go? Where would I see that again? Oh, oh, hold on. Oh, right here. This one here? Yeah. Let's click on that and see what that does. Yep, there you go. Oh no, this is creating a new one. Why do you say that? This is is it, is this creating a new post? I want to I want to add Why do you say it's creating a new image. one? So how do I add the I want to say wait a second, wait a second. Just go back to what you were just on. Um, Single post. Single post it's now called. Okay, stop. And what we're looking at right now is the header block, the header template for the post template. And the reason why, well, uh, changing the post template will give us the result that we're looking for. And I think now with the combination of the site and the uh, standard editor uh, into one in many respects, we should be able to edit it right here and have it take effect as a template part. Okay, what are you doing? So I'm seeing if I'm able to find, I'm gonna click on this and type up blog. Um, well, tell us first because we're trying so to- I'll just oh. briefly add in here. So template means every time you write a new post, it's gonna use that template as a backbone. So whenever well, you not, write not, a new don't post- Don't refer to the backbone. It, it, 
the page you write that on your post, working that picture will is going to go up there. Yeah, it will come with a header and a footer that are created by the template. And then what you're doing in, in working on an individual post is filling in the content area between the header, the footer, and any sidebars there may be. So what we want to do, I'm oh, sorry, Jason, did you want to continue? So I think if you want to change the picture of that single post, I think we just need to go to that post and then use the theme block editor to replace the image. Yes, if that's that makes one sense. way to do it. That's, that, that assumes that at least, I mean, if you've done that, great. My understanding is based on the change so which was pending a month ago, having gone into effect. So changing this background image we're looking at should then change the post template and it's included template part. So from here, template. you'll click edit post. And that will give you an option to edit with the theme editor, I believe. No, I think it's the edit so, site is the other one, but edit post should be what we want now. And edit okay. with Elementor. Actually, we're not going like to get the Elementor. Like I, I never really liked Elementor because I just don't understand how to use Elementor. This so is... I just don't really like it personally. So you never used it. Okay. Um... Yeah. Jason, I think when you edit the post, you get only the content area of the post. I think probably you have to use the site editor displaying that post. Okay. To, yeah, to we can try that. But the core problem is every picture should be um, sticking to the content of each post, right? Like she doesn't want to be, she doesn't want to okay. use the same picture for all her posts, right? So there's got to yeah. be an area I where she has that, to that, fix. I, I didn't understand that. Is that in fact what, what you want? You want to change that header image on every post? Yeah. Oh shit! What the hell? Because that means get rid of the header and replace it with a cover block, and then then you have to change it because the cover block will be blank from the template. Yeah, I, you know. So creating the um creating the post, like I'm, I know how to, you know, create the post. So that's just not my issues. You know, I want to be able to change the the image for every blog post that I create. Okay, let's I just, just stop I don't want let's that stop, people... stop. Let's hold up for a second. Mm -hmm. You have to understand the distinction between editing the post and editing the post template. We're looking at now the post and we can't edit the part in question using the editor on the post itself. So let's try the site editor without changing the page. Let's just try the site editor. Um, what happened to our site editor choice up there? Remember, we had one. Um, why don't you click um, the back button? Mm -hmm. Click the back button go. for the browser. The back button of the browser. There we go. Let's try to get back to where we had one more. That basically, yeah. Okay, now stop here. And... Uh, the edit site icon is the one we want to click, which is the third from the left. Yeah. So let's see what that gives us. Okay, well, let's just con let's confirm that you want each post you create, each individual post is to have its own large background image, such as the one we're looking at now, correct? That's correct. Or do you want the same image for all posts in this particular place? No, no, I want I want to be able to um, add an image, a different uh, background image um, to any one of my blog posts. So suppose I want to write a blog about- Okay, cooking. now I understand why you might want to do that. So mm -hmm. it seems to me, Jason, that here we're talking about deleting the header 
from the post template and replacing it with a placeholder, such as a cover block, which is the quickest way to provide a background image and a title. Right? Well, then she will have that exact same image for all her, her future. No, posts, no, 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 because we're not. Because the template is the cover block and it's empty. And you create an instance of that template and then you change the cover block by providing an image. Right? Yeah, then that becomes the template. No, you use the template to create an instance of the template and then you modify the instance. Uh, yeah, whatever you say, you can try, but usually with these uh, private themes, that's not how things work. There's like one global template that you set up and then every time you want to give it a tweak per post, you have to change using that themes editor for that specific post. Right, but here that's not the case because we're looking at the post template, right? So, so what I'm trying to say is we're going to create a new post template called post template one. And in that particular case, remove the header in question and put in its place a power block that isn't filled in with anything, just left empty. Save that template and then use that template to create posts. Then each instance of that template, each new post created using that template. Probably going to be blank. So you'll have a blank, have a blank cover phones. block, which Robin, you then change. My, my live. Robin, I, I see a problem, though. OK. Across the top of a page, there's menu items. Right. And they're sitting in the header. So if we create a blank header, we won't have a menu anymore. It's, it's well, then we can just turn the main, new... it, turn the header into just the navigation component. Yeah, so so we we still have a problem that yeah we can put a new picture on top. No, of no, the what, what we're talking about then is just create a copy of the template, the post template. Yeah. Change the header to be just the navigation component of the header. Yeah. Which probably means delete the cover block that's already there. Then add below that immediately yeah. below that. Yeah. A cover block, yeah. which is of the same dimensions as the old header. You're you're reminding me of nightmares on on uh, um, photo editors, where you lose track of where your stack is, and you. Okay, but let's not let's left. not go so, far from this point here, though. So my point yeah. here is we don't touch the template. It's not the template's problem. So I'm just gonna have that. I'm just naturally going to have that defaulted. Um... Jason, that doesn't make any sense. How could it not be coming? So we need to template? find the section every post. I mean, we need to find the location where you change that image in every post. Because what you're doing now, the creating a new template. But, but, how, but Jason, how do you change an image in a template part? From the instance of the template. Usually the, the theme panels have it, this kind of like private themes. I'm not sure which theme she is using. Is that the post grid or no? Um, no, I'm using, um, hold on here. Where do I find the appearance? Because at least for my theme, that's how it works. I have one global post template and every post I create, I can basically give tweak to any part of that post. Right, yeah, but so I think that's terms... specialized. I, I wouldn't generalize for themes in uh, cross like Your like... method also works, but to me, that seems like you will have to be creating a new template every single time you want a different image for a post. Why, why do you say that when the item in question that has the image has had the image removed and left open to be inserted in the instance i mean like as long as it's not a are, template part as long as it's not a template part we, we can we can follow you along and do the step by step like you can give her instructions yeah. so I, i'm i'm a little yeah different. so i don't know i just i don't i i just personally wanted to be able to um change the um the background of that post. Right. But I, I don't think you're going to be able to do that unless you understand 
template versus template part versus just a block in a content area of a post. And that's where Jason and I are, are not of one mind. He's saying, no, this will be some special thing that the theme in question does. So um, then that's specific to the theme. Um, so even I'm talking like about what I'm dealing with is just any theme using blocks, which is the case here with this theme, uh, will have the standard properties um, of blocks in templates, template parts, and so on. Anyway, I think if you if you simply learn the distinctions amongst those things, then I think you'll come back to what I think is the best course, which is in order to have a unique background image in each instance of a template, then the thing that you're filling in with the image has to be something which can be changed on each instance separately. Therefore, it can't be part, the content can't be part of the, of the, the template because you wouldn't be able to change it then. And I think with bearing those things in mind, then it's quite straightforward to have a post specific template that has a cover block without a background image yet and a nav bar, which is the only thing that makes up the, hem the header template part. I think that's the prescription right there. That's it. Just replay the tape. <laughs> I would say. Um, I mean, other anybody else have an opinion they want to jump in on? I, I I would be concerned from my my history working with with PHP and MySQL that when you start creating a stack of images, you sometimes lose control of the refresh. And when you do a refresh on a screen, you don't necessarily get the order you, you thought you were going to get. So you go to all the bother of creating an image, and then somebody clicks a button, and the screen refreshes, and suddenly your colors or your fonts or everything is just goes crazy because the refresh is not coming in the order you actually did your programming. So I would be a little concerned that when you do what you're saying, Robin, that it may not always refresh properly. But we're only talking about a single image that would otherwise appear as just an image in a post content, but, a, a, an image block in, a, in the post content. That's what we're talking but, about here. But, it's just adding it's a, a block for that purpose. It happens but, to, I'm recommending but, a cover block because yeah, that's uh, the block Robert, for the job talking, in question. We're talking a blog here, which would probably be an active component where people can input data and hit enter. And then the screen refreshes. And it's that refresh that I would be concerned about. Okay, well, I, I, what is it that we're doing though that's causing this problem that you anticipate? Is it just because the mere addition of an image to a post? Well, it, it's just, if, if you're directly manipulating the image that you're seeing on the screen. No, we're not, the first, the we're not, we're just, inserting, we're just inserting a link to it in the yeah. library. But, but I just wonder if that link gets blown away on the refresh. That would be my concern. I've never heard of it happening. No. I, I've seen yeah, it happen in, in other environments. Not, not, I've never done it in, work in, uh, in this environment, but I have done it in other environments. Okay, but let's not introduce that such okay. an esoteric problem here. Yeah. <laughs> nice try, Mike. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I guess, I don't know, because this is what, you know, people would see. So I just, I want to be able to just... Yes, so we can we can default. try doing uh uh what Rob said. So I guess I think it's no, I don't think we have time to go through that. Oh, we don't have quite okay. a bit of time here, but I think okay. that I, I think you've got quite clear details to to follow up with, Natalie. Um, mm -hmm. Go to it. I mean, just to briefly summarize, you're going to create a new post template by copying the existing one change the header so that there's only the nav block, add a cover block, which is in effect what you just deleted from the header, but now you're replacing it so that you can make use of it each time with a different image. And I, I anticipate no problem at all with the template in, in this way of working. 
This is like this. This is what WordPress is designed specifically to be able to do. Okay, mm -hmm. so if you'd like to end now your screen in, share. Uh, now I had another one more question before you go. Um, Only if it's in very terms brief. of the yeah yeah very briefly. My my website is not um indexed on Google. How why so? <laughs> Uh, well, you could I have, have the uh, robot exclusion uh, directive in your HTTP um, file or your HD access file. That could be the problem. Or isn't there a setting somewhere here in WordPress that you could turn off indexing, guys? Yes, it's in. Um, well, you don't isn't isn't the thing where you want a second, a second, your Drew, website to be indexed? Drew. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Where yeah, is it? It's in. Uh, um, uh, and on the dashboard under settings, and I think it's reading. Okay. So you want to check that setting to make sure that it's not settings. turned I off. It's, I think it's the reading settings. Third item. Reading? Yeah, I think it was there. Because right. uh, people like to turn off indexing when they're building the site. Search engine visibility. Okay. Well, okay. So you're good. The yeah. setting's okay, right? Okay. Yeah. yeah right. That's I, fine. Yeah. All right. So the next thing to check would be to go to um, a Google Search Console um, and uh, uh, have a look um, at your sites through Google Search Console and see if there are any crawl errors. Yeah, that'll tell you um, why your site isn't getting indexed. Have you set this up? Natalie? Yeah, and I don't, it's just not, I don't understand why it oh, says, okay, you know, go. one not indexed. And it's just, this means that I'm, I'm not, I, I don't get clicks. I'm not getting any clicks on my website because it's not indexed. So Google can't crawl my site because there is something not happening. And I just don't understand why a page with a redirect, like, what, like, how do I fix that? Hmm. Like this is the reason why it's not indexing because this is the error. This is the error. Um, this is the report why my pages are not being indexed. Why people can't find it because. Well, did you click the icon where it says "Not Started"? Does it have it by the name for page indexing page with redirect? Sorry? It looks, I mean, is it the home page that has the redirect? Uh, it the, looks like the, when you hover over it. there, you get three icons across the row. You need to be knowing what are these icons and what do they do. So where it says your site name, down an inch, down an inch, move the cursor down, the other direction is down. Somebody help me here. <laughs> Can I ask one quick question? Have yeah. you tried requesting indexing manually? Because if it's a new website, it usually takes time for it to index unless you manually do it. When did when did you start or when was the site available for indexing for the first time, Natalie? Um, I like, built this hours, days, I, weeks, months. About a, about a couple months. Couple months since right. about January. Let's try one thing. Um, at I, the search bar at the top where it says I, inspect any URL, can you type your homepage? Yeah, I, there in I, search. I typed the URL in as, in as three words, and it found it at the top of the list. Yeah, I just did. I think what Jason is is planning to do here. Yeah, and um, I uh, got a Google search result with uh, eight indexed pages. So how enter. Many page, yeah, how many pages have you got? In property. Hmm. So the home page is not something in the um... property for this particular account. Well, it is being indexed by Google, though. Uh, yeah, but it's not. That's a different process, or at least mm. the indexing is fed into the Search Console. But 
I don't think the indexing is controlled by the search console. Mm. However, I yeah. am I am able to pull uh, eight pages of your website out of the Google search index. So it is it is getting eight of your pages are being indexed. So, how so many it is pages, viewable. Yes, it is. How many pages have you got uh, on the site? Oops. Actually, it's not not really eight pages because some of these are duplicates. Pages, but I find the pages, all pages. I have a total of one, two, three, four. Well, this is private. Like this one here is oh. private, but I have the one. This one is not active. This okay. one's drafted. So one, two, three. Okay. All right. So it looks like your site is act is actually fully indexed, despite what uh, Google Search Console says. So why don't I have any clicks? Like, did nobody see my website? Like, nobody saw my website? Like, nobody? Like, if somebody had came on my website, wouldn't it have shown me at least? The, the, the clicks that you're talking about are the clicks that Drew's already said turn up in the Google search report. So the first part of a search engine's job uh, of making the site visible to others is happening. What you're complaining about is that the data is not being fed to the search console. Now, we haven't gone through, I mean, there's a process you have to go through to set up the search console, to set up oh. Google search. Um, okay. What plugin have you installed to that end? What plugin have I installed? Yeah, what plugin are you using to get Google Tag Manager or um, is it Site Kit or something like that? Or, I mean, if you don't know, if you haven't done anything in that regard, so then I don't think you've actually set the site up for search data. In other words, your pages have to have a chunk of code in them, which packages up the click that we're talking about and sends it to the search console to be recorded or documented, or I guess just stored, and then later analyzed, right? But you have to do the first job of getting the search console going. Um, by both um, adding the component necessary to the pages and posts, well, all the pages, and it just becomes a, it becomes a standard item in everything that's displayed by the site. And that knows to what account to send the data. That's what your site has to know. And then on the Google end, Google has to know, well, what code is coming in to tell me which site it is that I'm just, provide the data or store the data for. And that's what the code in question is that, that you need. Mm -hmm. So did you do any installation on the site with respect to Google search? Nothing in terms of Google search. I mean... Um... So I think basically you simply have only done, you haven't done any of the setup part other than opening the account itself and giving it that first euro. But um, maybe, I mean, maybe I could be um, um, not thoroughly knowledgeable, like I'm, this is all brand new to me. So maybe I'm not thoroughly knowledgeable about how the setup is for the Google console. But I mean, if my setup is incomplete, maybe that could be. No, I, I, as I say, it's not the console yet. It's the. Uh, I mean. Ah, OK. I think I've discovered what's going on here. Um. Everything um, Google has fully indexed um, the URL without www, yeah. on it, but not with www. So if you search it with www, you don't get it. But if you um, search it without, you do. However, people won't necessarily be, uh, yeah, in fact, with, with www, uh it is um absolutely not coming up at all you're not coming up at all i think that's what um uh the uh, search console might be complaining about with that redirect error mm. so basically here so basically what you're saying is the google search console they recognize the information or my website as HTTPS, like with the www dot. No, without, without it. 
It's your Google actually recognizes it without the www. Without it. Yeah. So in order for Google to recognize it, I would have to add the www dots in it for Google in order to do for Google to recognize it. Well, and keep, all of this issue to disappear. Keep in mind this that's only for people who are uh, are actually looking up your site, Google searching your site by the site name, which they probably won't. They're probably going to look up um, yeah. things like um, kid-friendly vacations and stuff like that. And, we, and so in which case they will find it. They'll just find it. And, uh, and it actually does, if I just click on one of your URLs here from the Google search, yeah, it actually does go to, uh, does go to your site. Yeah, because to one of my understanding understandings is that even if whether or not the the user types up www.snuggleups or they don't, the user still should be able to land on my page or land on Google where they're able to access wow. where it, it pops up or at least no, I shouldn't say that. Sorry, if they type up www. Or without it, it still should be able to land on my sites, to my understanding. I'm just going to double check that. But this is not the problem that we were talking about, mm -hmm. uh, which is the data and its analysis of her traffic. Yeah, okay. yeah, Robin. So I I understand your your points as well. Where you know maybe my setup on my back end is incomplete. Why? Well, I'm not if, able if to you haven't made any done any setup, then it's not incomplete. It doesn't exist. I, I think what you really need is a good tutorial on um, you know search analytics, how to use Google effectively, and it will take you through the startup procedure for adding the plugin that you choose from the ones available to your site, configuring that plugin, which includes getting a search ID from Google so that Google knows who the site is and your account knows which site is in question. And then that will start the data collection and analysis process that you're looking for. Mm -hmm. But to, to be able, for Google Analytics in particular, which has just gone through a complete transformation to Google Analytics 4 from Universal Analytics uh, in well, about four or five months ago. Um, so things are, are sort of brand new, sparkling and such at, at the Google end. And uh, you have to be careful when you look at tutorials that are talking about the modern version, like the 2024 version of Google search uh, analytics. We're not talking search, we're talking search analytics. Um, and you're spinning around now is just making sure that you're not going to remember what I'm saying clearly. And uh, so we'll, we'll we'll wrap up this uh, part of our session. And uh, well, just before we leave this uh, subject, uh, I did check the www dot version of your site, Natalie, and it mm -hmm. actually redirects to the version without that, with just the domain name, snuggleupescapes.com. Uh, and that is controlled right down here under, I think it's your general settings. So if you look under settings, general. Settings, hold on. General. general. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. like, do so I have to like, add a www dot right you here? Don't have, I mean, it's perfectly acceptable to use it like that. And if you do you still have the tab open with your um, search console? Uh, that we were looking at just a minute ago. With the search console, which, yeah. which one here? Yeah, we, you were looking at Google. You were showing us your Google search console. Oh, 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 okay. Yeah. yeah, that one. So if you change that to inspect the URL without the www, just snuggleupescapes.com. Hold on one second. I can't hear you. You sound a little bit faint. One second here. Already, sorry, can you repeat that again? Yeah, so we want to have a look at the site without the www. So if you change it in the in the, up at the top, uh, inspect report, you know, go back to search console. Okay, see up at the top where it says uh, search uh, any URL in there. If you change that to, uh, or just remove the www from that. Mm -hmm. Oh, 
Snuggleupescapes.com. Dot com, yeah. And then click search. Yep, go ahead, yeah. Oh, okay. Let's. Huh. I think, Drew, you have to add yeah. www to yeah. the properties to tell it to collect, uh, you know, traffic for both that and the, um, you know, bear domain. Yeah, or you want to add that to a property in your search console. So add the add the version without uh, uh, without the www to uh, yeah, if you if you click on you see uh, just above where you are there's a drop down with your URL in it you click the down arrow there add a, and add a property um, Yeah, and um, domain. Yeah, enter domain. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So smuggle escape up escapes. Would I add in my domain name with or without with, the, uh, the, the www? Without, without, yeah. Without? Yeah. Yeah. Because I wonder if I'm not in a property why this is also happening to snuggle up. Escapes. Engineer. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Very so. fine. Very fine. It's right. pretty much uh, Drew Copy as a the, new the, domain, the text and it's going to require you to go through the uh, verification mm -hmm. process. Verify. So copy that. I, this is not the place to do that. Hmm. I mean, for for one thing, it would you'd be doing it, but you would have no idea what you were doing, and you wouldn't remember a thing about it in five minutes. You, I, I personally think you have to take a tutorial first, learn what properties are in Google Analytics, and actually, it's it's a bit of an investment to make use of Google Analytics. There are plugins that emphasize the simplicity of what they do to measure and report on traffic, you might consider one of them because Google Analytics is very sophisticated. I mean, it'll, you can use it on General Motors, um, but it does take a fair amount of, you know, I, I say 30 to 40 hours to have a good basic understanding of how to set up and use Google Analytics. I yeah. worked with, you know, was part of a group of uh, about 12 or 14 people who were all going through uh, an educational course from Universal Analytics, the old way, to Google Analytics 4, the new way. And um, I clocked 35 hours of work time to get to the end of the fourth lesson. But Google has a tutorial program that is really, really first class. But mm -hmm. even in those 35 to 40 hours, you really only get started. I mean, with the basic sort of grasp of what's going on. So it may be sensible to find a simpler um, tool there, for traffic analysis than Google search. Yeah, there is actually a really good plugin but from Google called SiteKit uh, that will do a lot of this stuff for you. Yes, but it does it by setting it up, yes, but it doesn't explain what properties are and, you know, the dozens of things that you have to configure in order to get meaningful data. Yeah, it, it just from, gets from, you going. I'm sorry? It just gets you going, gets you started. Well, we'll get her to the place she's at now, which is no data being analyzed. I mean, right? Because just generating the data, which is what SiteKit does, right? That's the plugin side. Well, what it will do, though, is get the non-WWW version of her site um, registered, which is what we were trying to do. Right. Good. But I'm not sure if she would have any idea what to do next. Anyway, well, one step I, at I a made time, my, right? point, my, my point, point that you have to, there's some time and effort, I think, involved in making Google Analytics work. Consider something easier uh, and less, you know, less time consuming. 
Um, but if you are bound and determined to use Google Analytics, then um, you, you need yeah, Site Kit on the one yeah. side, or there's other ones to consider. But I'm if you want to install that now, I think you're just well. Let's see. Activate. Go ahead. Anyway, let's move on. Enough on this. I mean, it'll series. walk you through the process of of setting it up. Drew, we don't yeah. want to spend an hour on just one series of problems, mm -hmm. do we? Well, anyway, yes, mm -hmm. yes. If if other people, I mean, tell me what you'd like to do because I'm content to go with whatever people want. Mm -hmm. Natalie, I think you're okay once now uh, to do this yeah. on your own, um, to mm -hmm. go through the site kit and get it set up for you. Or, or Mike or Doug, do, do you want to go through site kit? It's an interesting thing to learn. <laughs> yeah. So with the site kit, it's, it's, it's almost, it's, um it's almost like the, um the, the Google consult. You know, it's just not something I would guess about. I'd actually go and learn what it is. Um, mm -hmm. the, this like this is like too far from guesswork land to to make sense. Mm -hmm. But if if anybody's interested in seeing site kit, uh, Drew take us through it. Please speak up. I'm I'm too focused. I don't want more hits to pay for mm -hmm. them. <laughs> That's it. Yeah. Everybody, I don't want coming to my it, That's right. What you think? It, money. Uh, I would like to get some. Uh, notice, Robin. Was that go, go down sorry, yes, Greg. Sorry, Greg, is that you? Yeah, sorry. I was just hoping to get some input on uh, my issues for uh, WordPress uh, if we have time. Yeah, maybe, okay, well, let's... Maybe, maybe Natalie can do this rest part on her own and we can move mm -hmm. on. Absolutely. Right. Okay, thank you, guys. Thank you so much for your help and your time tonight. Thank you okay. so much. Okay. Greg, you actually were the fellow who wrote the comment. Uh, with the details and so on. So if anybody, people would like to turn to the event page that has uh, Greg's description of his problem. Sorry, Natalie, did you have something to say? Uh, no, no, um, I guess that's it for now. Um, yeah, I guess I'll just navigate um, my way through and kind of figure things out. Um, Try taking it the systematic way and kind of, you know, find a tutorial first. I mean, it may be more enjoyable that way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I, 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 I go to YouTube University, so I mean, I self-teach myself a lot. So Actually, I, mean, I, uh, I don't think in this case, YouTube is a good venue for this kind of tutorial stuff. It's just... I, you know, yeah, superficially, sure, but not for the details. I mean, I, I actually haven't seen any YouTube videos that I was, uh, I thought were very helpful. Anyway, let's on, move on to Greg. Okay, perfect. Thank you so much. Okay. Take care. So is this, um, can you turn off your share, Natalie, or is that Greg's? Um, no, that's not on. my, that's Natalie still. Okay, so turn yours off, Natalie. Let me see. Hold on one second here. Shoot. Okay, Greg. Um, let me just, if I can. Come on. <laughs> uh, See if this will work. Right. Okay. So that's um, Greg's notes. Uh, page cache is detected, but the server response time is still slow. Be uh, in response time. So this this looks like a, an issue that comes and goes. Uh, so right now, actually, this critical issue is gone from the dashboard, and uh, and from the from the tools site site health now shows uh, good, but before it was you know problem or whatnot. Right. Um, so, but it does it does come and go. It, it will come back. So I'm not sure if maybe that initial issue, the 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 critical one, 
um, the server response time is slow. Is it simply because maybe the the host is of poor quality and I should just look for a new host? Is that is that accurate or is there something else? Well, page caching occurs at different levels. Um, at the level, for example, of the host, uh, of the application itself, of the site through plugins and such. Um, and so usually problems involving performance are sort of by stripping away the different ways to boost speed to the sort of the, to, to the core sort of way the thing operates and then adding them on and checking to see what effect they're having. Um, so for example, the page cat one level of page caching is controlled by the host and needs to be reset from the host or cleared from the host. Another is in WordPress itself. And then, and then do you know what plugins you've got that involve, I mean, if you've got rocket WP for instance, or WP rocket or um, WP cache or I have auto, auto optimize, auto optimize. And that's got caching. I can show you what I have. <laughs> I don't know if that's helpful. Well, the reason I just mentioned it because um, anything involving the caching, you have to just remember that there are these different kinds of caching mm. activities going on. And so dealing with one of them does not necessarily, and doesn't typically affect the other several. And so that's just like a starting point. Uh, nothing specific here. Um, now, if performance is changing, depending on what you're displaying, or so what your thought is that is it may be a time, like some days at some times it's slower, but it doesn't depend upon what's being displayed. That doesn't seem to be an influence. I actually don't know what's, what's causing this. So, you know, for example, right now, um, that, you know, my site health says that it's good and this critical issue is gone, but it was displaying just a short while ago. Um, so I, I don't know why why sometimes it sorry i'm not sure if i'm seeing everyone um yeah i don't know why sometimes this critical issue is gone now it's just two recommended ones and one of them is this persistent object object right, and that's what that's the hosting level right because mm -hmm. as it says in that first sentence under there um your hosting provider will tell you if a persistent cache can be enabled so you need to find out if persistent ca object caching is enabled at the host level is one of those points there, right? Mm -hmm. Do you the see that? Yeah, the is message that? posted says that your host appears to support the following object cache services, APCU. Right. Which, which it does uh, on this mm -hmm. message as well here. Yeah. So I'm not entirely sure um, whether this is this is truly critical or not because as I said it comes and goes. So right now there is no critical. It does look like it's you know good, whatever that means. Um, Keep in mind if you're I think you said you're using Bluehost. Yes. Yeah. Well, that's probably uh, a shared hosting plan. Yes. It and is. Um, shared, of course, means that it's you know like. 17 people in a one room apartment with one toilet mm -hmm. it's uh it's uh and there, there's going to be a lineup <laughs> okay but um, the lineup will vary greatly from one day to the next from one time of day to another mm -hmm. time of day just think of it's like a, it's a random process right there are some <laughs> times like 11 to four o'clock in the mm -hmm. daytime which are probably pretty busy um but i you know, we have experienced perhaps with a couple of dozen hosts, and I've not found uh, uh, performance problems from the host because of the shared aspect of the service. Oh, I see. Um, however, that may not be your experience, and so there's points well taken in that regard. Um, so one thing you can do is find out from your host if persistent object caching is enabled and working on your site, and they can answer yes or no. And if it's no, then offer to enable it. I, I guess you're asking, is it enabled? And if it's not enabled, please enable. Mm -hmm. I'm going by my WordPress health check recommendation. 
and that'll tell them everything you need to know about where you're coming from. What was the first point of the two uh, on that health page? Um, the first one is, um, scheduled, oh, event. scheduled event is late. Um, you understand the problem that, that, that this describes, at least in the, in the broad sense, is that um, like with a JavaScript on a, on a, on a typical WordPress page, um, if the JavaScript's necessary or here, the script, the scheduled event, Jetpack Synchron, if that's supposed to run and it doesn't, or it does, but it hangs, then it can cause all the following processes to hang as well. Mm. Now, um, there are different ways to find out if you have this scheduled event problem occurring again, apart from the site health thing, like an audit log plugin that will report things like that potentially. Um, but that's something that you can simply query um, Jetpack support and simply say, um, I got this message in my site health and I've been having uh, intermittent um, uh, performance problems. Could this be a problem? And if so, what do you suggest? Mm -hmm. Good, good suggestion. Thank you. Yeah. It may be something they just don't know about or it could be a setting that they can tell you to change. Um, but that, you know, um, Jetpack is WordPress, right? So um, their products should be held to a very high standard, both in terms of their use, but also the support. Very good. Yeah, so one could be affecting the other. Okay, appreciate that. Thank you. What What is it that you are thinking? Sorry, could you please repeat? What is it that you're actually thinking that it says uh, you're, you're running on a schedule? Oh, um, nothing, nothing on my end. I, I it, just... it looks like it's a it's syncing a cron job, and it appears that what it looks like what um um actually, the cron job is a sync. Yeah, well, it, yeah. It, but well, uh, WordPress schedule. itself, the shared the WordPress doesn't have real cron, uh, and I suspect what's happening is that. Uh, Jetpack is and automatic is actually providing an actual cron service to this instance of WordPress. Um, the, um, <clears throat> is what the way WordPress's cron works is that it waits for a certain number of um, uh, users to uh, retrieve pages on the site before it executes a cron job. It doesn't actually have cron synchronized to uh, the Linux host um, the way uh, most um, CMSs do. Because cron means time, right? Yeah. Cron normally means at this interval or at these times each day or uh, something time-based. So running a cron job on any other basis is sort of a strange use of the yeah that that's the theory and and WordPress cron is actually fake cron uh, and that's why people do these sort of hacks to try and synchronize it to uh, uh, an actual uh, cron server. So it's something to do with Jetpack, and I can yeah yeah. But where our only concern is, could this be causing a performance problem by hanging? Mm -hmm. or not completing promptly or whatever. Um, uh, and you could also just Google that beforehand, uh, just Jetpack and that particular name, uh, and that's all. And then if it's an issue, boy, you're gonna see hits, right? <laughs> it's a, it really, you can take almost any scrap of code and give it to Google. And this is even before the AI sort of avalanches gotten well underway and it'll actually pop up with stuff. Uh, I use that with Elementor scripts. I'll just take a piece of something that Elementor has in a given site and just Google it, find other sites that have that same code, look at them and sort of backtrack to sort of detective like figure out what's going on. I wonder if chat GPT is any good at troubleshooting WordPress. I haven't tried that. Mm -hmm. Well, actually we're up to five now and um, three, four, five. Um, I've tried it out myself on WordPress 
by asking questions I know most of the answer to, and even more importantly, that I know the thinking process that's necessary to get to a good answer. And it's done a fairly good job. I mean, I've been impressed. Now, um, there is a um, um, uh, Apple product authority um, named um, Howard Oakley, who did an, a fascinating blog post um, six or eight months ago, in which he pointed out that a user had fed um, a GPT-4 engine, uh, you know, a Macintosh systems problem and got back, you know, a three or four page answer. And so this expert, like he's a real legitimate expert, analyzed it. And he said, a lot of it was pretty good, except for one fucking thing. The very crucial point to begin the whole process off, they blew. They recommended a system rebuild as the first step. That's the last step. That's the last mm -hmm. thing that you do. And he said, a, you know, a five-year-old would understand this, but not an AI program. <laughs> so he says, in that particular case, you know, you got about four-fifths or five-sixths of a really good answer, and then you killed yourself on the sixth. Mm -hmm. So he says, that's one of the problems with, with AI is that it's just, it, you got to know what you're doing to be able to evaluate and use the results. And 90% of the users of AI right now can't do that. And so they're just taking it as is. It's kind of like, get your news from TikTok. Mm -hmm. Sometimes that'll be right. It, it will yeah. be legitimate news. Most of the time it won't be. Yeah. So Greg, did we resolve your issue? Uh, I think that's very helpful. Thank you. Yeah, I'll do some more digging and with the other part, I will contact the host and see what uh, what help they can offer. But yeah, very nice. Thank you very could much you, for that. Could you do me a favor and on the page for the event, you know, where you yeah. put your comment, just add a sentence or two or three saying, hey, I waited and I waited and I waited and they finally got to me. But I think it was worth the wait and it, it uh, encourage other people to um, take a chance and check us out. I appreciate yeah. that. I, I will do that. Okay. Thank you. So, so Nithya has a question. Hey, everyone. Uh, uh, just uh, one thing. Uh, everyone is asking to have a follow button in my blog, but I have a subscribe button. Follow button is not there. Only this available for Fediverse or something. But I don't know how to have that follow button. So follow. I wonder with. I wonder if they're referring to uh, following with um, an RSS feed. I don't um, know. I get comments in my blog stating that there's no follow button. Do, do you know what follow means? Yeah, I'm not sure about just a second. I'm sure. Oh, I'm sorry. Was that a yes or no? No. I'm not sure about. Okay. So that's what Drew's dealing with first is one kind of following is like follow on Twitter or X now or TikTok, meaning whenever something new is posted, notify me. Yeah, kind of that. I think they are referring to the blogs. Can't seem to find the follow button. Something well, like I guess that. it depends on where you put it. Where'd you put it? I do have a subscribe button in my blogging website, so I'm not sure what they're talking about. Yeah. Maybe you just change the button to follow. Yeah. Or put two, subscribe, duplicate the button, and change the name from subscribe to follow, but leave the code in the button the same. And if somebody wants to subscribe, they can subscribe. If they want to follow, they can follow. Normally, the follow, though, means just click the button and then the application takes care of who you are and, you know, the paperwork in the background, so to speak. A, a newsletter subscription, you have to provide an email address. So yeah. follow doesn't actually work, it, literally, because your site doesn't know who the visitor is. Yes, that's right. Good. Now, the other kind of follow, 
Do we need to talk about RSS? Yeah. I, I, I haven't um, really seen much discussion of RSS in the last five years or so. It's uh, kind of fallen out of favor. Um, especially since uh, Google canceled the uh, Google Reader. A lot of people... Yeah, that's one that it. actually I haven't been using. <laughs> and I couldn't find one that I liked. And so I said, oh, the hell with it. There are other ways to... Yeah, um, this... Uh, the, this me, way that Drew's now referring to is a scheme that's ancient in history in the sort of the um, on the internet and, and its predecessors. And um, uh, you need a plugin, I guess, to implement that, or, or is it just something to turn on in WordPress? It's native, but you might need a plugin to supply a um, a link in to, to put an automatic link into your blog posts. Right. So the difference the difference here with this kind of following, um, which is, um, what does RSS stand for? Syndications in there. Really, service. really simple syndication. Really simple syndication. Um, when you are set up to provide RSS service, then when somebody clicks to follow, in effect, then what happens is they're a program on their machine, a utility on their machine, a reader, gets the blog's name and goes and checks the blog and makes a list of all the posts that there are. And the next time you publish a post, it then knows it's new and puts it out to that person's list of blog posts from all over the place. So it's an aggregation tool for blog posts from various sites controlled by the user slash reader. And what you're doing is providing the contents of your access to your site through an API, um, which does all the work of packaging up the content of your posts and sending them out to this reader process uh, without you doing anything at all. It's actually pretty cool, but it just, its popularity has pretty much disappeared uh, with the rise of social media platforms. I know, okay, let me take it out. So, should be good. Okay, if you want to turn off, or you didn't know we weren't sharing. Okay, so I think it's a little after 8.30, or a couple of hours has yeah. passed quickly. Robin, I've got one question. Sure. Um, <laughs> watching people tonight, back, back in the day when I was actually writing PHP and the MySQL queries myself, I would basically load a black screen and then throw the menu on it and craft the keyboard entries. And only after that would I bother putting the animated graphics on the screen. And the result was the users were really happy because they'd hit the website and they would be able to just click or hit the button or whatever uh, and never have to wait for the graphics to load. And I just haven't seen anything in WordPress that seems to suggest there's a way to do that. Isn't that what lazy loading does? Pardon? Isn't that what lazy loading does? Well, that's my point. I didn't know that. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm not sure if lazy loading is the only thing that WordPress does, but there have been a number of efforts in the last six months to improve the performance um, of images and other things which are loaded and therefore necessary when pages are displayed, things other than text, I guess. Yeah. And so before you had to have a plugin for lazy loading, and I think that I would check to be sure that it's now part of core. Um, so um, you could simply look up or you know search for performance improvements in WordPress related to um, loading scripts and images. Yeah. Because part of that is, um, I don't know, my mind's just gone blank, but there's um, a way to push JavaScript, for example, to the end of the page. So, so oh, yeah, uh, render blocking JavaScripts is what they're called. Render blocking meaning uh, JavaScript or that could be something else like a stalled script somewhere else on the site 
um, mm -hmm. prevents uh, the rendering of the content of a page, publishing it, right? So that's your that defines your problem, or at least the problem space, as render blocking something rather. Mm -hmm. um, and then in performance improvements with lazy loading as an example, uh, if would pull in anything else that's going on that's relevant to you know current work. There is a performance team as such, like an editor team and a performance team and a marketing team and so on. And these performance guys have only come into existence in the last year. And when each release of WordPress comes out, they now measure the performance of the release against its predecessors so that they can then tell us, here's how much faster WordPress is compared to two months ago, four months ago, a year ago, and so on. And it's actually fairly impressive. You know, they're rebuilding things just to make them work faster and more smoothly. So, so this performance team has a blog, right? On Make WordPress, uh, the Make WordPress blog has a sub blog, so to speak, for the performance team, as well as a uh, Slack channel of their own. So you could ask a question there, and probably get a pretty interesting answer. Like just, hey guys, I was thinking about this or working on this problem and I had this question in my head. Yeah. Can anybody here answer it for me or point me in the right yeah. direction for an answer? Yeah, yeah. like I, I've done the scrolling uh, background and some of them let you put in the interval differently for each picture. So if you load the first picture, just a black screen, you know, with 10 seconds or something. Right, right. Uh, then boom, everything's up on the screen, and then ten seconds later, you start getting the clouds mm -hmm. and the, you know, the entire whatever, and right, right. Like that. and it looks really impressive, but you still get that quick load. Um, and but the problem is that that's embedded in the slideshow; it's not right, on right. the screen, and and then you have to worry that WordPress is going to try to cache the slideshow before it paints the screen, and that's just that, that's where I'm, you know. I just noticed there's a chat message here from George. Is George still around? Yes. Yeah, no, excellent point that RSS is very much alive in publishing and syndicating. Um, oh, yes. And that's great. I mean, I, I'm not familiar with that. And so I appreciate the input. That's helpful. Um, that's may I ask a question? I'll keep it short. Real short. Yes, of course, because we're past 8.30. First of all, a big thanks. It's my first time here. I found it very informative. And apologies, I didn't know the the um, the protocol for asking questions, and then I realized you post them first on on the meetup page. Well, we like we like people to. Not everyone does it, and and so um, tonight was an exception in in the one we just did. Okay, um, I do have just a quick question. If I can bring out my screen visually, it literally sure. is a very quick question. Sure. So if I may share my screen. We're going for punishment here. Okay, so <laughs> desktop one, and let's hope it doesn't. Oh, come on. Oh, sorry. Let me share the screen. Figures it would uh, want a Mac for you. Locks everything down. Okay, here we go. I don't blame my Mac. Oh, geez. You know what? I won't bother you because it asked me to uh, restart the program. And I don't want to keep you. Um, but the question basically is, um, I used to use WordPress a long time ago. I'm coming back to it. And I just staged a prototype site. And the thing I'm trying to identify is what template could I use so that if somebody's viewing the site on a mobile, the menus aren't basically a long list that take up the whole screen. Unfortunately, in the prototype I just did, I had nested menus. Okay, so what? Which it, it's theme dependent to start with. Of course, yes. And block themes build the responsiveness in so that that comes, so to speak, free of charge. And if you play with your browser window yes you, you can see the tab and the mobile versions being generated on the fly so prior to the block sort of transition or paradigm at wordpress it was a, a theme question how they handled that particular thing um and so that's what you need to look to hey i wasn't so much uh, asking about the flow of the page from desktop view to mobile 
right? It's the way the like if I have a, uh, like a now the particular design of the of the mobile version is that it? No, it's the drop down menus that if you have too many uh, uh, sections and then subsections in the, in the nav on the desktop, they basically take up the whole vertical screen when you drop okay, down. Yeah, okay, I see the problem. The, yes. So some themes, Cadence, yes. for example, yes. offer the ability to um, uh, vary the menu used between mobile and desktop versions. So you can have a desktop a mobile version of the menu that you yourself control to deal with tiering or like multiple yes. sub menus or whatever things that work on the desktop that don't work on mobile can't size down or scale down because it doesn't work that way. You, you need an alternative navigation scheme and uh, many themes have ways of doing that for you. But if your theme isn't, then you, you really have to, then have a basis to create the mobile version separately from the desktop version. I know that Elementor does that. Cadence does, or at least they have the capabilities to do that. And I would be surprised if you have a good theme, if somewhere in its documentation, they don't give you the option to control uh, navigation from a, the mobile version differently than from the desktop version. Yeah, that's very helpful advice. And thank you again for the session. Sure, no problem. Jerry, anything to add? No. Okay. Okay, guys. Thank you, guys. This has been a session. <laughs> we'll see you all in a month's time. Okay, good night, good night everybody. Take care. Mm -hmm.